There's a common misconception in aspiring computer science students that I've talked about in the past, and that is computer science is all about programming, but it's not. Programming is actually a small percentage of what you learn and do as a computer science student. However, you obviously still learn how to program throughout the computer science degree as well. And a lot of that computer science theory is better used, in my opinion, when you apply it using code. You saw an example of that when I made a video about my favorite computer science program of all time in a video I made just a month or two ago going over that program. But again, that was not the initial idea for that video. I was gonna go through multiple programs that I wrote as a computer science student and explain what course it was for, how it applies to computer science, and why we wrote the program and show you how it works. Well now, I'm finally making that video. We're gonna be going over a handful of different programs I wrote as a computer science student, go through the program and explain why we wrote this program and hopefully give you a better idea of what to expect when it comes to programming as a computer science student. Now in your first year and maybe into your second year as being a computer science student, you will learn the basics of programming, building your own programs from scratch, as well as going into other people's programs, maybe that your professor wrote and learning how to manipulate, maybe refactor or add a feature to that code. This is to get the basic idea of the syntax itself. Well, at least that's part of it. The more important part are the fundamentals you learn along the way because later you will need to understand these fundamentals and use them in whatever language is best for that particular project. That leads me to this program written in a language called Pavre. I had never used Pavre before writing this program or since writing this program. The entire idea of writing this, as well as the other two programs in two different programming languages throughout this course, which was principles of programming languages, the idea was to take what you learned in one programming language, the fundamentals, and transfer that knowledge over into another programming language and understand why this particular language has the syntax that it does. And this code right here creates this little image right here. I was actually supposed to make a steampunk city that integrated water. I put a building on an island in the middle of water and for some reason my professor really liked it so he uh, gave me a good grade on it. <laughs> I didn't fit the theme, but uh, hey, I'll take whatever I can get. And you can obviously see that Pavre is perfect to create something like this or anything else that you can find on the internet that is created using Pavre because you have the camera direction, you have the light source and where that's positioned, you have the sky, and then you go about rendering what is a fairly good image. And then of course we have my favorite computer science program of all time, the Wrestling Tournament Simulation. It was in my advanced data structures and algorithms course where we learned all about data structures and algorithms and then implemented what we learned in that class using code, which was C++, our main programming language for my school. You can clearly see the implementation of the data structures and everything else that went into this program to implement ADTs, which was the overall goal of the course. Vectors, lists, stacks, queues, sets, maps, heaps, and graphs. If you need to learn more about data structures, I've made two videos going over seven of them, I believe, in pretty good detail with pretty good animations. Just check on my channel if you're interested in that type of stuff to learn more and more about it. And this of course is the output. We had different schools in the same conference, different weight classes, different individuals in those weight classes. And then we made them wrestle each other in a tournament style bracket. And the winner of weight class one is this one from school 700, wrestler four. And then in weight class two, from school 600, wrestler three, so on and so forth. And for the next two programs, you're really gonna have to hang with me because as I've said in the past, computer science is really just a an applied math degree in a specific industry, computer science. So there's obviously a lot of math that is required, but also a lot of math inside the computer science curriculum itself that is required. One course in my school being computational methods and software. This is one of the programs we wrote in this, which is LUDComp, stands for Lower Upper Decomposition and Linear Algebra, and this is to solve for those matrices. The entire idea of the course is in algorithms and software for fundamental problems in scientific computing course. So your topics include properties of floating point arithmetic, linear systems of equations, matrix factorization, stability of algorithms, conditioning of problems, least square problems, and, and 
and a lot more. So how does this math and other math that you learn as a computer science student apply to computer science itself? And how do you implement those via code? Well, in this case, we take a strictly mathematical topic LU decomposition, whereas in numerical analysis and linear algebra, it factors the matrix as a product of the lower matrix and the upper matrix to find the solution. And as it says right in the Wikipedia article, computers usually solve square systems of linear equations using LU decomposition. So it's very heavily used on the numerical side of computer science and numerical analysis. And I believe it's used in principal component analysis as well as linear, linear discriminant analysis. So when learning that and understanding how it applies to computer science, we wrote a program that is the LU decomp solver. So you input the matrix, as you can see up here, we want a three by three matrix, row one, row two, row three. We enter the elements of the B matrix because we're solving for AX equals B where we're finding the LU decomposition of the A matrix and that basically breaks down into AX equals B where we're trying to find X, where in this instance, the three by three matrix is the A matrix and the one by three matrix is the B matrix, which is one, five, 10. It runs through our program. It displays the lower matrix. It displays the upper matrix. It finds Z with the LZ equal B, finds X with the UX equals Z. Those are the steps in between A equals LU and AX equals B or kind of, I don't remember everything. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. And then it displays the solution, which is six, negative seven, these are the things that you're able to do when you understand the theory as to uh, the why, and then you implement the how using code. And while this is the preferred method, it is also known as the matrix form of Gaussian elimination, which again, many people say LU decomp is just the better version of Gaussian elimination. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really remember much about this program or even the best example to use for Gaussian elimination, but obviously we wrote a little bit of a, a little program for Gaussian, Gauss Jordan elimination. How many variables enter the coefficients? We have to allocate memory for our matrix array. And then it goes through a handful of steps, initializing right hand side to identi identify matrix, identity matrix, partial pivoting, pivoted output, reducing to diagonal matrix, reducing to unit matrix, print inverse of unit matrix, and we delete the memory that we previously allocated. So here is maybe a solution over here, not sure. But there you go. Uh, we wrote this one, I believe, before we ever wrote the LUD comp, and we did it in the same exact class. And also, just for another example of math in computer science, this is a CS course, uh, Intro to Discrete Math, I believe. Sorry, Intro to Discrete Structures, and this was one of my homeworks. So, just to give you a little idea. Yeah, so, uh, math. This thing is glitching out, isn't it? I hope that give you a little bit of insight into what to expect when you're going into a computer science program. Again, it's going to be mostly theory, but hopefully in those courses, you'll be able to implement that theory using code, building upon the fundamentals that you learn in your first or second year as a computer science student. And I don't know if I say this enough, but I truly appreciate y'all watching and supporting me on the channel over here. I'll see y'all hopefully next week.